You know, the older brother will always boss you around, you know. And you have, you have to do what he wants. Well, now, Lakshman wanted to do things to please Lord Rama, but Lord Rama did not. Like, especially like when they were in exile, Lord Rama, uh, Lakshman wanted to make comfort a comfortable situation for Lord Rama. But Lord Rama would refuse to say, no, I cannot accept these things. I'm, in, I'm here to do tapasya. I should do austerity. You are spoiling it. So Lakshman became very disappointed, very frustrated in his efforts to try to give service to Lord Rama. So he vowed, he said, in the next incarnation I'm not going to come as a younger brother, I'll come as an older brother, then I can do what I like. <laughs> so Lord Rama came as an older brother. He was the seventh child, Vasudeva and Devaki. They were imprisoned by King Kamsa, and Kamsa had killed the first six children of Devaki. Although he was told the danger was going to come from the eighth child, Kamsa was so ruthless 
But when Devaki gave birth to children one after another, Kamsa killed them. Then the seventh child was Lord Balarama. Lord Balarama was in the womb of Devaki for seven months. But then, by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, she was, Balarama was transferred to the womb of Rohini. Rohini was another wife of Vasudev. Vasudev had many wives, actually. So, by the, arrange, by the arrangement of Yoga Maya, you know, if you two children want to talk all the time, you can go outside. You don't need to be here. You can go in another room if you're going to talk all the time. So, Lord Balarama came into the womb of Devaki first. And he. <laughs> so Lord Balaram came into the womb of Devaki, he was there for seven months, and he made arrangements for Lord Krishna to come. Just like we say, before the king comes, the minister will first of all come. And the minister will make all the arrangements for the king. So Lord Balaram was playing the part of the servant of Lord Krishna. Although he himself is also the personality of Godhead, he came in the mood as a servant. Lord Balaram is actually like the Adi Guru, the original spiritual master. And he's coming to show us all the mood of the servant in serving the Supreme Lord Krishna. So Lord Balaram was in the womb of Devaki, then transferred to the womb of Rohini. Rohini was living in the home of Nanda Maharaj over in Gokula. And Vasudev had sent Rohini there for her safety because he knew that Kamsa was so, he was so cruel that he would, ki he would kill all of the wives of, of Vasudeva if he could get them. Anyway, he had Devaki in the prison and she was giving birth. Then when the seventh <coughs> child, when Lord Balaram moved to the womb of Rohini, then everyone thought, oh, Devaki has had a miscarriage. So they thought, anyway, that was the seventh child. Kamsa's danger was going to be from the eighth child. And of course the eighth child is Lord Krishna. Anyway, Lord Balarama appears from the womb of Rohini over in Gokul, home of Nanda Maharaj. And later on, Vasudev brought Lord Krishna from Mathura over to the home of Nanda Maharaj so that Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram could be together and they could perform their pastimes in the forest of Vrindavan, in the home of Nanda Maharaj and take care of all the cows of Nanda Maharaj. So Lord Balaram performed many wonderful pastimes in the service of Lord Krishna. Lord Balaram, he has two wives. Just like Lord Nichananda has two wet. There's no difference between Lord Chaitanya and Lord Krishna. In the same way there's no difference between Lord Nityananda and Lord Balaram. Prajendra Nandana say, Sachi Sutta Haila He, Balaram Haila Nikai. Right? That Lord Chaitanya has come as the son of Sachi. Uh, Lord Krishna rather has come as the son of Sachi and Lord Nityananda, he has come. He is Lord Balaram. So they've come together for the past time. Uh, Lord Balaram uh, had two wives. One of the past time, one of the wives was 
the daughter of a king called Revata. And this King Revata, he, he was appearing long before Lord Krishna came, long before Dwapara Yuga, in the Treta Yuga, he was there. And he had this daughter, he wanted to get a good husband for his daughter. So he took his daughter with him and they went to Satyaloka, the planet of Lord Brahma. And he wanted to ask Lord Brahma who would be the best husband for his daughter. So when they got there to Satyaloka, they were told, you have to wait. Lord Brahma is listening to a concert. There's some musical concert taking place. So when the concert's finished, then you can meet Lord Brahma. So the king waited with his daughter and they waited after the concert was over. Lord Brahma came and so then the king approached Lord Brahma and asked him, he said, I wanted to ask your advice, which of these kings would be good for a husband for my daughter? And the king said, who are these, what's the names of these kings you want, you think might be good for your daughter? So he mentioned the names of many different kings from the earthly planet. But when he said these names, Lord Brahma laughed. He said, those kings, they all died long ago. <laughs> and the king was surprised, Maharaj Srivata was surprised. He said, no, he said, I, I was on earth, they were there, they were just young men. Mm -hmm. But Lord Brahma said, yes, but you've come to Satyaloka. And on Satyaloka, the time is different <coughs> from earth. On Satyaloka, one moment of Brahma's time is one year on the earth planet. And you've been waiting here, you waited to see me. So while you were waiting, so many kings, generation after generation, they have come and gone. So, and all these kings you are mentioning, they're all long gone. So Maharaj Srivata was surprised. What, what, to, what am I going to do? But Lord Brahma told him, he said, don't worry, he said, go back to earth. And he said, you will see Lord Balaram is there. Lord Balaram is the personality of Godhead. And he will make a suitable husband for your daughter. So the king thought, well, that's very nice. If he's the personality of Godhead, couldn't get a better husband than that, right? And so Maharaj Revata came back with his daughter and they went to see Lord Balaram. And Lord Balaram said, yes, I can accept your daughter. Only problem is she's so big because she was from the previous yuga. Mm -hmm. And the previous yuga people were much taller. Lord Balaram said, anyway, I can... And he took his plow and pulled her down to the sun and made her a suitable height to be his wife. So Lord Balaram carries the plough. That's one of the names of Lord Balaram, Haladara. And he uses his plough, just like Lord Krishna uses his Sudarshan Chakra or his club, Komadaki club, Lord Balaram will use his plough. And the significance of the plough is, and just like you have a field, you plow the field, you use the plow to prepare the soil. Before you plant the seeds, you plow the field, right? You, you see the farmers with their plow going to plowing the field and then they will plant the seeds. So the same way Lord Balaram, we said he is Adi Guru. So he prepares the ground for the planting of the seed of devotion. Lord Balaram is doing that duty. That's the significance of the plough, that he's preparing all of us for receiving that seed of devotion to nourish our bhakti. So Lord Balaram also uses his plough sometimes. Just like I said Lord Balaram had two wives, the other wife is said, Lord Balaram's other wife is Varuni. Lord Balaram is very fond of honey. 
when you celebrate Balaram Purnima, you have to offer some varuni for Lord Balaram's pleasure. And it's very, honey, you know, if you drink a lot of it, it's very intoxicating. So Lord Balaram would enjoy to drink honey. And sometimes he would become quite intoxicated drinking honey. So one day when he was drinking the honey, he was intoxicated because Vrindavan, many forests, twelve forests, and where there are forests, where there are trees, you get a lot of bees. And the bees will collect all the pollen from the different vegetation growing around in the forest. And they live, make, give honey. So the Balaram was there in Vrindavan, he'd been drinking a lot of honey, he'd become intoxicated. At one point he ordered the Yamuna River, you come here, I want to bathe in your water. And the Yamuna didn't move, nothing happened. So Lord Balarama became a little bit upset. He said, oh, you don't want to come, you're not going to follow my instructions, huh? I'll break you into little streams. And Lord Balaram took his plow and began to hit the Yamuna, he began to break it into little streams. And at that point, the goddess of the Yamuna, Jalangi, she came out from the Yamuna river and offered her obeisances to Lord Balarama and said, Oh my Lord, I'm so sorry, I did not know your transcendental identity. Please forgive me for my offense. And in this way, Lord Balaram was happy and he bathed in the water of the Yamuna. So that's one pastime, Lord Balaram with the plow. Another, another pastime happened when uh, it was uh, Lakshmana, the daughter of Duryodhana. Uh, she needed to get married and there was a, the one son of Lord Krishna. Uh, do you remember the name? Samba. Huh? Samba. Samba. Yes, yeah, Samba. Samba is the daughter of Jambavati, the son of Jambavati. He was the son of Jambavati. And Samba means he doesn't behave very well. He needs to, and when the child doesn't behave well, then he should be with the mother because the mother has to take care of the child, to keep the child in order, right? And so Samba was like that. He was a, a naughty boy, he didn't behave very well. He was, later on you'll hear in the eleventh canto, it was Samba who was responsible. When the sages cursed that the whole Yadra dynasty would be annihilated, it was because of Samba. Samba had dressed like a woman and he put a big iron ball uh, and covered it with a cloth pretending that he was a pregnant woman and they came to the sages and they asked the sages, oh great sages who know everything, is this woman going to give birth to a boy or a girl? And the sages, they knew this is, you know, this, they're making fun, they're mocking our ability as sages. And the sages said, this woman will give birth to a child, a child which will destroy the whole Yadu dynasty. And so that was a curse, the whole Yadu dynasty was destroyed as a result of this curse. So it was Samba who was dressed up as a woman who came with a sari with a big metal ball under his cloth looking like a pregnant woman. And so Samba, he, he wanted to get married, he wanted a nice wife and he was attracted to this girl, the daughter of Daryadon Lakshmana. And she was a very attractive woman. So when the woman was very qualified, they would arrange the Swayamvara for her, that she could pick which man she wanted. So all the princes came, they all gathered, they were all thinking, the, you know, I think Lakshman will, Lakshmana will want me, I'm the best, I'm the most qualified man. But Samba knew, he thought, I know she's never going to pick me. And he said, anyway, I will pick her. 
<laughs> so uh, Lakshmana was looking at the different princesses, trying to make up her mind which one she wanted. When Samba came and he just took Lakshmana and took her and went off with her. But then they chased after him and they captured him and they took him a prisoner. And so then Narada Muni had to give, give news to Dwarka that Lakshman, well the son of the daughter of Duryodhana had been taken by Samba and Samba had been taken a prisoner and put in prison. So then they thought, oh okay we'll, we'll go to war with the Kurus because the Kurus have arrested Samba. Samba is the son of Lord Krishna. So Lord Krishna was going to take the whole army and make a big war but Lord Balaram said, let me go. I will go, I will go and talk to them. He said, I am a friend of Duryodhana. <coughs> so let me go, I will go and speak to them and I will settle the issue. So this was a very nice service mood of Lord Balaram. He thought, rather than have a big war and many deaths, let me go and I will go and speak to them. So Lord Balaram went there along with Buddhav and some other great sages they all went together and they went to Hastinapur to see Duryodhana and the Kurus and of course Duryodhana is a friend of Lord Balaram. Lord Balaram was like his guru, he'd been teaching him how to fight with the club. So they were very close and when Lord Balaram came there he made a camp outside the city and Duryodhana was very pleased. They came with a big entourage and they gave a very nice reception for Lord Balaram and all the sages who had come, they welcomed them and then they asked them why they come. <coughs> and then Lord Balaram said that I've heard that you've taken Samba, prisoner, so you should release him and you should give his wife also, the girl, Lakshmana, that he's already touched her He's taken her for his own wife, so you should give them both, we'll take them back to Dwarka with us. So when Lord Balaram spoke like that, Duryodhana got a bit upset and, and he was not pleased and he began to speak insulting words about the Yadu dynasty and that how, what right have you got to come here and order us to do things? You're just the shoes. If you want to be on the head, you want to tell us what to do. Lord, Bala, Lord Balaram heard them speak these insulting words and Lord Balaram became angry. And Lord Balaram said to them, he said, when, when a child or when an animal doesn't do what you want it to do, then you have to have a stick. You use a stick to control like you have some cows or some bulls or some, you know, you have a stick with it, with it to keep it in order. He said, I can see you people, you're like that, you like animals, so I will teach you a lesson. And he took his plow and he began to hit the ground and he began to drag the whole of the Hastinapur palace into the Yamuna river. <coughs> And so when Lord Balaram did like that and they saw the whole palace of Hastinapur moving into the Yamuna, they said, no, no, please, oh Lord Balaram, they all you know, they became very sorry and they begged Lord Balaram, they, no, they said, we only spoke like that, we just wanted to see your power, we just wanted to see an exhibition of your true glory. Certainly we will give Samba and you can take his wife also and they give a dowry and everything. So Lord Balaram took them all back to Dwarka and Lord Krishna of course was very pleased. Lord Balaram had done such nice service. One thing which happened was Lord Krishna had married Rukmini. Now Rukmini, she had, her marriage was arranged by her brother Rukmi. He would arranged Rukmini's marriage to Sishupa. But Rukmini had written a letter to Krishna in Dwarka 
to tell Lord Krishna that actually I want to marry you. She told Lord Krishna, I want to marry you. I don't want to marry Hrishishupala. My brother has arranged this marriage. Please come and rescue me before the marriage takes place. You have to come and take me. And Rukmini had given details and everything. So Lord Krishna came and he did that. He captured Rukmini, he took her for his wife. And Rukmini was very angry. Of course, Sishupal was also angry. He didn't get the wife he wanted. But Rukmi, Rukmi, the brother, he was really angry that I arranged my sister's marriage to Sishupal. And this Krishna has come and stolen my sister. So he was very angry. He went after Krishna. He said he vowed he would not come home unless he could bring back his sister. So he went after Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna saw him coming, so Lord Krishna stopped and had a fight with him. And of course he defeated Rukmi. But he didn't kill him because Rukmini was there. And she was thinking to Krishna that, Oh, he's my brother. Oh, don't kill my brother. Oh, please don't kill my brother. So Lord Krishna didn't kill him. But he cut off some of his hair. You know, he gave him a, not a, he, he just, he, he, you know, for Kshatriyas that's very bad. If you have your, the Kshatriyas they don't cut their hair. You can see the Sikhi like that, the Sikhi, they won't cut their hair, they grow their hair. So the Lord Krishna shaved off some of the hair, he didn't do it. So that, that was the, the end and Krishna took Rukmini for his wife. And Rukmi, so he was living there, he, he, he didn't go home, he made, a, he made his home in some other place. But after some time it happened that there was another marriage arranged. And this was the grandson of Rukmi was married, marrying the granddaughter of Krishna, something like that, One, some other wedding was taking place. And Lord Balara and Lord Krishna also came for the wedding. You know, people like you people do it when there's a wedding, you go out to Bangalore and <laughs> 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 so Lord Krishna and Lord Balaram, they came also for the wedding and Rukmi was there and Rukmi thought, I will challenge Lord Balaram to a game of chess. So they had a game of chess and Lord Balaram wasn't very good at chess. But this Rukmi, he, he, he knew some tricks. So he was playing chess and they were betting each other and the bet started like one gold coin, then one thousand gold coins, and then a million gold coins, and then a hundred million coins, like a huge amount, you know. And the, the first couple of times uh, Rukmi won, but then the th after some time Balaram won. And when Balaram won, Rukmi would not admit, admit it. He said, no, I am the winner. And even a voice from the sky said, Balaram is the winner. But ba this Rukmi, he had a lot of evil friends. The different friends like Sishupala and Jarasandha and the king of Kasi. And they were saying, Yes, Rukmi is the winner, not Balaram. So Balaram was not very happy. So then they had a bigger bet, they bet a huge amount. And again, Lord Balaram won. But again Rukmi said, No, I am the winner. And the voice again from them, Yes, Balaram is actually the winner. But all Rukmi's friends are saying, Actually Rukmi is the winner. So Lord Balaram took his club. <laughs> he let Rukmi have it. He killed it on the spot. So it was interesting because Rukmini was there with her husband Krishna and Krishna was a little bit confused what to do. Should I congratulate Lord Balaram that he's killed him? <laughs> 
because he thought, this is my brother-in-law, you know, he's killed my brother-in-law. If he, and if he congratulates Lord Balaram, then his wife will not be very pleased. But he doesn't want to chastise Balaram. If he criticizes Balaram, then Balaram will get upset also, you know. <laughs> he's a rascal, you know, he's a demon. So it was good to kill him. Anyway, this is, this is the pastimes of Lord Balaram. So Lord Balaram. Balaram Purnima we celebrate that very important for us. Uh, if you have if we have problems, we have difficulty in spiritual life, it's very good to approach Lord Balaram. Just like your worship, maybe you're worshipping Jagannath deity, so you have Lord Balaram there with Subhadra. So it's very helpful that if you have any problem, any com difficulties in your own life, if you approach Lord Balaram, he's very merciful and he can help us overcome the obstacles and the path of devotion. So that Balaram Purnima and then of course eight days later we have to make the Janmashtami, the appearance of Lord Krishna. And Lord Krishna appears in Mathura. The Janma stand of Lord Krishna. But if you ask the bridge passing people who is the mother and father of Lord Krishna, the bridge passing people will not they will not say Vasudeva and Devaki. They will, they will say Krishna and they will say Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj are the real mother and father of Krishna. And they say that actually when Vasudev brought Lord Krishna from Mathura. He brought, he brought the baby from Mathura. That was Vasudev Krishna. But the child born to Mother Yashoda, Mother Yashoda, she also delivered a child. Not one child. Mother Yashoda had delivered two children, one boy and one girl. So Vasudev brought over the Vasudev Krishna and he left that boy with Mother Yashoda. He took the girl which Mother Yashoda had delivered. He took that girl back to Mathura. But the two, that, that one Vasudev Krishna entered into the other form, Mother Yashoda's child, Shamsundar Krishna, and became one boy. So Shamsundar Krishna. You have the combined form of the child from Vasudev and Devaki combined with Mother Yashoda and Nanda Maharaj. In this way, Lord Krishna appears in Vrindavan as the son of Nanda and Yashoda. And he is able to enjoy all the beauty of the Vrindavan forest and his pastimes with all of his devotees. Of course, Lord Krishna, from his very birth, his life was threatened and the demon Putana came, tried to kill Lord Krishna. But Lord Krishna, from his very birth, he was showing his divinity, that he is the personality of God. Because even the big demon put in a cane, Lord Krishna could take out the life of the demon. So Lord Krishna, he is the most enjoyable. He is the supreme source. He is the av not avatar, but he is avatari. All the incarnations, they all come from him. And Queen Kunti, she says that the form of Lord Krishna is more enjoyable than any other form. Like some nowadays people are very fond of Lord Rama. They worship Lord Rama. Many people are going to Ayodhya to see the birthplace of Lord Ram. But Lord Rama does not reciprocate with the devotees like Lord Krishna. Lord Krishna 
enjoys all the loving exchange with his devotees because he comes as a cowherd boy. But Lord Rama, he's the king's son. He's a prince. You cannot approach him so easily. Hanuman is always kneeling at his feet, waiting for orders how to serve him. And I would say Lakshman had a difficult time with the younger brother. But Lord Krishna is very merciful. He enjoys all the different loving exchanges with his devotees. So we worship Krishna as the Supreme Personality of Godhead. And in Srimad Bhagavatam, Srila Vyasadeva also said, Krishna do Bhagavan Smaya. Lord Krishna is the original form of the Godhead. He is not the avatar, but he is the source, the origin of all the avatars. They all come from him. So we will celebrate Janmashtami in Kuk, a very important festival for all of us. Many people come, of course, in that day. We make programs everywhere. In India, of course, it's a holiday. You don't get a holiday here. <laughs> Okay, any questions, any comments? <coughs> yes, Maharaj, I wanted to know that uh, Devaki and Vasudev were parents of the Lord, then why they had to go through so much troubles in their life? And they were kept in the shackles even after uh, the birth was done and you know, still, still they were kept in the prison, so why they had to go through? Yes, why they have to do it? Well, you have to understand that even as devotees, it doesn't mean that there will be no trouble. The Pandavas also went through a lot of trouble. Not only Vasudev and Devaki, but the Pandavas also had to endure a lot of difficulties and trouble. And Queen Kunti. Of course, they were not in jail, but they were in exile for so many years, right? And then they had to go incognito also for one year. And then the battle took place. So, so many things happened to them also. We have to understand the nature of the material world, that there will be difficulties, there will be problems. But the devotee will never give up their devotion to Lord Krishna. Queen Kunti never regretted that she would had so many difficulties. And Vasudev and Devaki, they were in prison for some time, but then when they got out of prison, and then Lord Krishna was asked by Devaki to bring back all the children, the six children which Kanta had killed. And Lord Krishna did. He went there to the Yamalok, and he brought back his older brothers, the six, uh, those six brothers, of sons of Devaki, and he brought them back to Devaki. And so Lord Krishna, he had some difficulties for them, for Vasudev, but they never gave up the shelter of the Lord. And the Lord came as their child. They were not able to enjoy the pastimes of the child, but they had the they, they had done austerity just to ask, to get the Lord as their child, that the Lord should be born as their child. And so that happened. The Lord was born as their child, but then the child went. But then later on, after Kamsa was killed, then Vasudev and Devaki, they live in Dwarka. Krishna takes care of them. They enjoy their pastimes in Dwarka. Mm -hmm. So nature of material, you get some happiness, you get some distress. You have to tolerate these things. Queen Kunti said, let all these calamities happen again and again, because then I will see you again and again. An easy-going life is not very good. 
for our Krishna consciousness. An easy going life, but no difficulty. You, you make advancement, the more there are difficulties. Bhaktivinoda Thakur says like that. The, the more there are difficulties, that's the time when you will really take shelter of Krishna. When we're in difficulty, then we will chant the name with more feeling, with more concentration. If we're just comfortable, then we don't take so much concern, we're not so busy, so much bother. So that the difficulties are a blessing for the soul because they help us to focus more, to concentrate more on Lord Krishna. Any other questions? Okay, thank you very much. Hare Krishna. Thank you very much. It's all in the Oh, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, the question. Okay. Well, uh, morning I asked, like, there is a difference between attachment and affection. Like, one should have attached affection for the family members, not attachment. The question is, uh, should we develop attachment to pure devotees? Yes, you should. They said attachment for the material is the cause of the greatest bondage. But that same attachment, when it's applied to the devotees and to devotional service, then that opens the path of liberation. It's for our great benefit. So we do want to develop that attachment. Queen Kunti, uh, Lord Kapila told his mother Devahuti that she should become attached to a sadhu. Because it's the nature of people to be attached to things. So we want to de develop attachment for the Krishna and Krishna's devotee. That will be good for us. Attachment for the material. That's Okay. <laughs> 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 Next day. Five minutes, Kirtan is okay? Five minutes? Mm -hmm.